Swedish people, it's Brittany, and today I'm going to talk to you about the top books I read over the summer. The summer officially starts on June 21st, right around the summer solstice, and fall is the official end of summer, and fall started on uh, September 22nd, right around the fall equinox. And so those are the time frames that I'm going to be using to tell you what books I read then. I read 25 books throughout that time period and I gave six books five stars and so I want to talk to you about those six books. The first book I'm going to talk about is Ace of Shades by Amanda Foody. I really loved this book. I was, I was enthralled with this book very early on. I loved the atmosphere of this book. I listened to the audiobook of this book and I thought the narrator did a wonderful job of bringing the characters to life and gave and giving them different voices and you know making them very separate and that also plays into Amanda Foody's writing because none of the characters seem the same they're all very different and unique and they're all well fleshed out but there is a lot of character development that goes on throughout the book and at the beginning, Inn is like stuck in her ways. She brings her morals with her and she transforms into the person that she needs to be to survive this city. And I think her going to the city to look for her mom was such a great beginning of the book because you see that she cares about her mom and she cares about the people she loves and she will, she's willing to do anything for them. And so I think that speaks a lot to her character and to her as a person because she goes to all these lengths to find her mom. And if you don't know what Ace of Shades is about, it's about prim and proper Anne who goes to a finishing school until three months after her adoptive mother has been missing, she decides to go and find her in a city called New Brains. There she must team up with con man Levi to find her mother. They get into all sorts of problems. Both of them are tested throughout the whole book. I loved the setting of this book. New Reigns is a play on Atlantic City. I am really excited for King of Fools to come out. It comes out in, I believe, April. The next book I want to talk about is The Diviners by Libba Bray. I loved this book. This is the first book in a series. There are three books out now, and there is going to be a fourth book, but there is no release date for the fourth book. This book starts the series off with a bang. You are introduced to Evie O'Neill where she lives in Zenith, Ohio, and you find out that she has the ability to read objects. When she gets in some trouble with her ability at a party, her parents decide, well, we're gonna send you to New York City to live with your uncle. Evie is just over the moon excited to go to New York City, but when she gets there, she realizes that everything in New York City is not as it seems, and so she has to learn to navigate this new city and this new social structure and during that whole time, she has to help her uncle solve a murder. Evie is such an interesting character. She's not always likable. She does some pretty questionable things, but you can't help but root for her and get invested in her life and what she's doing. You're also introduced to a few other characters in this book, including Jericho, Will, her uncle, Sam, Lloyd, Mabel, Theta, Memphis, Isaiah, Sister Walker, and Henry. And you learn a little about each of these characters, but more so where fo this book focuses on Evie, Will, Jericho, and Sam. I loved these characters. I just got so invested in their lives and who they were and what was going to happen to them next and their interpersonal relationships and their struggles they had with themselves and their growth as characters. It was just all so captivating and the setting of the 1920s New York is absolutely fabulous. You get to see the Roaring Twenties and the Flappers and the Speakeasies and the clubs and that was really great but you also get to delve into the politics and the racial injustices and the social structure that goes on in that time and not everything is as it is now. It's very very different and I think Libba Bright did a great job bringing 1920s New York to life and showing us exactly what it meant not only to be a diviner during this time but to be someone of color or an immigrant and to see what their lives are like and what they go through. The plot of this book is fantastic. This whole paranormal murder mystery is really captivating and you really are just on the edge of your seat trying to figure out who's next or what it is, what's going on or why this is happening. And it, when you find out who it is and when you wait for the characters to find out, it's just so interesting. 
I was thoroughly immersed into this book from very early on and I just kept wanting to pick it up because I also listened to this one on audiobook and January Lavoy, the narrator, does a absolutely fantastic job bringing these characters to life and giving them their, each their own voices and I love the voice that she gives Theta. It just reminds me so much of Meg from Hercules and I just think that's so fantastic. I suggest if you're going to pick up this book to listen to the audiobook. The next book I'm going to talk about is A Fury Born by Claire Legrand. I read this back in July and it was just so phenomenal. I listened to this one originally on audiobook and fell so in love with it that I had to go pick up the book and that's not usual for me because this is a hardback and I don't typically like hardbacks but I just could not wait to have this book. I said I needed it now and I was like I'll just deal with the fact that it's a hardback. Fury Born is about two queens, a blood queen and a sun queen who live a thousand years apart and throughout their journey you are trying to figure out which of them is which queen and the first queen we meet is Riel. She gets revealed when her powers to control all seven magical elements is revealed when she's trying to save her best friend Audric the prince. She has to go on trials. The council can figure out if she is the blood queen or the sun queen and if she fails these trials then she is the blood queen and if she passes these trials she is the sun queen. Our second perspective is Eliana who is a thousand years in the future and all the stories she hears about Riel are just myth and legend to her. And Eliana is fighting in a world that is conquered and she's trying to find her mom who was kidnapped and she is thrust into the rebellion and she's trying to figure out who she is and what is going on and what is happening in this world because it just seems to be going to chaos. I love the story and how it's intertwined and each chapter is a different perspective and in the beginning, the prologue, you see how Riel's story ends and that really catapults you into this story. And even though you know how Riel's story is going to end, you cannot help but want to find out how it began and where it goes and what happened to get it to that point. And you follow Eliana's story from beginning until end. And there's just so much you don't know and you're trying to find out. And the world is so intricate and really well done and really well woven together through the thousand years. This book does a really good job of exploring what it means to be good and evil and how that is not so black and white and how you may never know really. You may think you are the hero of your story but really be the villain. It is just so interesting to see and you can't help but feel for these characters and what they're going through and I just absolutely love this and King Spain, the second book, comes out in May and I will be picking that one up as soon as it comes out because I cannot wait to see what happens next. The next book I'm going to talk about is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Wow, this, this book is just pure magic from start to finish. It is so immersive. Every time I picked this up, I just felt like I was falling into the book. I could see myself there and I just saw everything very clearly. And I don't always see that in books. Sometimes it's a little bit harder for me to see, but in this one it was just so clear, so picture perfect in my head and it oh wow this book huh. this is a bit of a slow burn book and it is like a historical fiction magical realism it is just absolutely wonderful this follows celia and marco who are thrust into a competition by their two father figures and this competition takes place at a circus one that's only open at night this book is very character driven and you see the characters grow and the dynamic and relationship they have with each other, with the circus, with their father figures, with the people who are also in the circus or the people who who attend the circus. It's just a very powerful book and it will definitely leave you thinking this book and the dynamics in this book have just stayed with me. The magic of it is very enchanting and I just love this book. This is one of those books where I picked it up and I read it and immediately after finishing it, I wanted to read it again. I actually checked to see if the audiobook was available on Libby. I was like, oh, I'm ready to dive back in. And I haven't picked it up since I've <laughs> had a lot of other things to pick up, but it is definitely one I will pick up again. I just think that it is something you will find something new every time that you pick this book up. I just think it's, it's really worth the read, even if you don't enjoy it or if you 
thought it was okay, but it wasn't spectacular. I think it leaves you with something to think about. Not everything in life is in a bubble. It's like one person and another person. They don't always just affect one person and another person. Like the things that happen to them can affect a multitude of people. And that is definitely what this book delves into. And I think that it is just so dynamic and so worth the read. The next book is The Final Empire or Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. The title changes depending on where you are. So I have the UK cover, so it's called The Final Empire, but here in America it is called Mistborn. But if you look up on Goodreads, it is called The Final Empire. So it's really weird. So it's like one of the two. It's um, it's like the Golden Compass for Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials book. It's called Northern Lights or Golden Compass or like both. They both mean the same thing. So that's what it is. So if you call it Mistborn or if you call it Final Empire, they're both the same book. This is a chunky book. It is a very, very big chunky book. But if you can see from all the tabs, I got a lot out of this book and it is... A roller coaster of a ride from the beginning everything is just up and down in emotions and everywhere you look something is happening and this is another book that is also very intricately woven and every person in this book plays a role in some way and there are a lot of mysteries you're trying to figure out in this book and you're trying to figure out what the heck is going on and I won't tell you a lot about the plot but I will tell you that this is about a rebellion and overthrowing an empire. The magic is so intricate. I think Brandon Sanderson does a really great job of having this well fleshed out magic system. All about metals. And in the back you can, in this one there is a guide. So you can see what they're talking about at the beginning. And it's all about metals and if you ingest these metals and you burn them, you can do different things. This book has everything. So it has <laughs> a lot of humor. So my orange tabs are humor. So it's got a lot of humor from our two main characters. They have all these like really snarky and sassy one-liners. And it's got, my blue tabs are sad moments. It's got some sad moments in it too. Um, and then the pink are romantic or heartfelt. And it's got those as well. And it's got some great quotes about what it means to be a person and what it means to be living in this world. Men rarely see their own actions as unjustified. I thought that was really powerful because it talks to you about how you may think you're a hero of your own story but really you're the villain of everyone else's and it's just so intricate and the plot twist at the end, holy crap, did not see that coming. Each of the characters is so unique and different. It is a very dense book. There is a lot in this book. Not only is it thick, but it is, it's got a lot of information about the world and a lot of information about the plot and it's, it was just very thick. This one can stand alone. So if you just want to read this one, you can, but there are some questions that you were left with at the end that make you want to pick up the other two books. This is also a very political heavy book. So sometimes the politics can get confusing or a little overwhelming but they all get explained and everything that they say is very important to the plot. So it's really worth it, but this is, like I said, a very dense book. The last book I'm going to talk about is a new favorite. It's not just like a favorite of this year or of the season. It is going to be one of my all time favorite books. I can tell, I mean, it already is. It's up there on the list and I just love this book so much. And that is Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. And I finally have my paperback copy. I am so excited to have this. It came in the mail and I was like, okay, I'm going to reread it now. I was like, nope, I'm reading other books. I can't do that. I am really looking forward to picking this book up again. I love this world and the characters and the whimsy of this book. I just, oh, this book is perfect. This book follows Morgan, who is a cursed child, blamed for everything that goes wrong in her region until one day she is whisked away by her patron, Jupiter North and she is taken to Nevermore. There she escapes her fate of dying on her 12th birthday, but to stay in Nevermore, she has to gain entrance into the Wondrous Society. And to do that, she has to complete four trials, three of which are mystery to her until they are revealed. And the last one is a talent trial. And throughout this whole book, she is trying to figure out where she fits in, what her talent is, who she is, and trying to pass these trials all along the way. I just, I cannot 
speak enough to my love of this book. I listened to this one on audio. The narrator is fantastic. This book seriously comes to life in audio, and if you have only ever picked it up, I suggest going out right now and picking up the audiobook because it's such an immersive experience listening to this on audiobook. I fell in love with these characters. Morgan, especially our main character, who we're following through that throughout the whole book is just fantastic. He's so sassy and snarky, but she is so kind and loving, and all she wants is to find a place where she belongs, and she really wants to get into the Winter Society because she wants that camaraderie that you get with being a part of that class. It is very comparable to Harry Potter, but it is not Harry Potter. It is not like a cheap imitation of Harry Potter. It has Harry Potter vibes. It has the same like morals and the friendship that Harry Potter has but it is so unique and different on its own that it it stands apart from Harry Potter while being on that same level as Harry Potter. So if you loved Harry Potter, please do yourself a favor and pick up this book. I just love this book so much. And if you haven't picked this book up, you really should because the second book, Wondersmith, comes out at the end of October and I am so excited to read that one. It's just going to be a wild ride. If you only pick up one of these books that I have talked about during this video please pick up this one because i mean that that's like my favorite <laughs> so those are the top six books i read this summer and i really hope that you guys go and pick up these books if you haven't already if you've picked up these books if you've read them let me know what you thought down in the comments below what books did you pick up during the summer that became an instant favorite of yours don't forget that all of my social media links are down in the description and while you're there, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the bookish content that I put out. I will see you guys next time. Bye!